Mark Lackey is at CSUF uh, Capital, and he was at uh, Can Tech Conference this past week. And apparently, people came up to him, right? Mark came up to you and said, well, "Do you do anything other than commodities?" Yeah, that's right. In fact, one other uh, TV organization asked me the same question: "What are you doing here?" <laughs> uh, and I pointed out that I was a research director for a number of years and a strategist, and I know a lot more than just commodities. And in fact, a number of people came up and said, "Pat, you know, it'd be interesting if if you went and saw Pat and said, hey, how about recommending some of the companies you saw here? There was about 20 on on display.'" And I said, well, I follow seven or eight of them. So, you know, here we are. We thought today we'd talk about some non-commodity stocks, and next week we'll be back to nickel. But uh, just to give some people some ideas, and, you know, you always have to be diversified. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Uh Theralase technology. I don't know half of these ones. Yeah. Well, you know, Theralase, Pat, I, when I first looked at them, they had uh, laser applications and they did a lot of rehab work, athletes and so forth. And I thought, eh, an interesting company, but wasn't, didn't really uh, get me all that excited. But about three months ago, they started using some of their lasers in the last, I guess, a couple of years. And the three months ago, the study came out that they'd done work with Princess Margaret and they actually had gotten rid of colon cancer in mice. And then the Princess Margaret people said, you know, we also think this could be very useful in terms of doing work in bladder cancer. So now the company So has, they're going in surgically and using lasers to yes, take out polyps exactly, and those kinds exactly. of things, right, okay. And so, you know, think of it as kind of biodestructive technology. And so, again, every cancer is different, as they were explaining to me. I mean, they may try to treat prostate cancer one way, throat cancer another way. It's not like there's a super drug out there that's going to solve all your problems. But the uh, people at Princess Margaret were quite amazed and surprised at how effective this kind of cold laser technology was. Now, we have to realize it's still early days. But when I look at this, this changes my view of the company, that they've gone from kind of the rehab laser work, which is fine, but this anti-cancer treatment, I mean, they're now going to do a lot of work next year and we're going to see clinical treatment and everything else. And if this works, it may be a, one of the best solutions we'd have for particularly bladder and perhaps colon cancer than the drugs and the surgery that's are, out there today. Are they today. profitable? No, they're not yet. And I would suggest they probably won't be, you know, uh, probably for uh, a couple of years. But I think that, again, the stage is set now that we have a use for this laser that's different than what we anticipated and could be a huge win. And the fact that you have one of the preeminent cancer hospitals in the world suggesting that this yeah. was a breakthrough. What I'm hearing is you're not committing funds to it yet. You're going to watch it carefully. Well, actually, I own a little bit of stock myself, oh, Pat. Yeah, no, I'm not, I don't have a huge position, but I did buy some stock now that I see this other possibility in the cancer treating area because, to me, this changes the dynamics of the company significantly and could make it into something that could be a takeover candidate, quite frankly, down the road, because mm -hmm. if this can work the way some of the people at Princess Margaret think it could work, then you have a whole different company. Okay, let's move to Pacific Safety Products. Well, here again, Pat, uh, I've watched this company for a while, and it was not making money. And then in the last quarter, it's turned in up to a profitable situation. Now, they're in the body armor business, so soft body armor, uh, tactical body armor. For police and Police, and the defense, exactly. And they are gaining a lot of market traction. And in fact, their sales projections for this year look exceptionally good. So now that they're profitable and they're going to get even more profitable, I'm in here because now it's a company that I want on my radar screen. I want to go forward and I want Do to be Do not worry that this is a really highly competitive area. Well, it is. It's really competitive in the United States. Yeah. Okay. In Canada, it's less competitive and they seem to have the competitive uh, advantage. They're out of Iron Prior, they're well connected here, particularly in Ontario with the police and with the military in Ottawa. So as long as they have that competitive advantage because their product's considered better than some of the other alternatives. I don't expect them to be able to break through into the United States anytime soon, but even in Canada, there's more than enough business for them. Hmm. Okay, Pro and, and now profitable. And now so profitable. That, that helps. That, that, well, that's the reason I'm uh, recommending it. Okay. Uh, QHR Technologies. Yeah, QHR. I've known this company for a number of years. Same thing, Pat. I only started to recommend it in the last year. Why? They're now profitable. Mm. Secondly, they sold one of their divisions to Logibec, which is another big company in the same area. These guys are basically in the medical technology software business, which is a growing business because it's been mandated and legislated by governments. I mean, people, the doctor can't just put, you know, your, your file and uh, put it in a filing cabinet and don't do anything about it. We now want to get these records that are kind of out there so that if, you know, if somebody goes to another doctor and is under a certain prescription, everybody's aware of the fact that maybe... 
this isn't a drug you should be using. So there's two parts to that. There's communication, right? That, uh, you right. Know, communication that there could be side effects of drugs, those kinds of things. But also security, I would think. Security. Uh, you're involved in the billing practices. There's a wide area here in this whole medical technology software area that people maybe aren't so aware of. I mean, I happened to get involved in a company a few years ago that Logibeck bought. Mm. So that's how I really even got aware of QHR. And I should point out, their chairman just won the award at Cantech for the best company in the whole high-tech biotech area. That's a pretty big award, and you're starting to get people now picking it as, in fact, one of their top picks. So they've gone from a company that was building it up and that I was interested in to now one that I think people should definitely have on their radar screen. You know, it's interesting, the uh, Las Vegas uh, tech uh, convention, the CES, was also on a couple of weeks ago. We had a guest in, and he says the biggest thing now is wearable devices, you know, smart exactly. watches, yeah, if yeah, you yeah, will, yeah. but then their ability to monitor your body. So that's Well, no, that's, it, it's interesting, play? the whole tech, medical technology area, because even the next company we talk about, same kind of situation, taking advantage of these advances in medical technology. Okay, this is uh, Zecotech Photonics. Ecotech Photonics, yeah. Zecotech. So people say, what are photonics? Yeah, well, without I getting do. into a long, uh, complicated discussion, because that's what it would take, the major factor here is some of the crystals they produce, and they have now come up with uh, product differentiation. In other words, the crystals can go into what are called PETs. And the PETs can compete with MRIs. Now, the MRIs are good, but they're not... Perfect. I'll give you a quick example of a fellow that played football with my son at Richview, broke his kneecap, but he also tore the ACLs. Mm. Well, they realized the kneecap was broken from the MRI. They never caught the ACLs because the MRI is not the same visual imaging. It's kind of like the difference between 3D and 2D seismic in oil and gas. 3D is much better than 2D. Well, the product that they've come up with, Zecotech, now is being sold into Japan. And that changed my view because now that I see somebody's actually buying the PETs, and taking it to their medical area. It's only a matter of time before North Americans also start uh, to buy these products because clearly they can find aspects in, say, an injury or a disease that the MRI can't. Now, the MRI was a big improvement over x-rays, but technology keeps getting better. And so, I, so I is this that company story. profitable yet? Or? No, they're not. Uh, they are losing a little bit of money. Are, their losses are declining. Whether they'll be profitable this coming year, hard to say. But if they get more deals like that, then they will be. But ultimately, I like the situation because they're kind of on the leading edge of these photonics, and they're also used in Homeland Security. So what they've got here is, I think, something that's got a particularly big growth rate potential, given all the business they could be in, not just medical, but security uh, and industrial as well. Always a pleasure having you here. Great next to be week here, it's Pat. nickel, right? Nickel next week, Pat. Back to commodities, so I have not <laughs> gone off the commodity cycle. <laughs> but we give you some diversification out there. That's good. Absolutely. Thing. Mark Lackey, CHF Capital, uh, joining us. We're going to take a quick break. Gina Phillips will be right back. Mm -hmm.